before I go through the questions of homework one, let me give you a very uh, brief review of uh, you know what you need to know before you begin uh, working on homework one. Uh, for the theoretical part, you need to know uh, about the algorithm analysis and time complexity of uh, code and algorithms and data structures. Uh, general, but you know, especially when you see a Java code snippet, you should be able to figure out how long it takes, how many instructions are needed as a function of n, where n is the size of the problem to run that code snippet. And normally we use a big O notation or asymptotic notation to represent the time complexity because uh, we don't really care about the coefficients or the uh, growth of function or the value of functions uh, for lower values of n. We care about uh, the time complexity when n grows and becomes uh, very, very large. So we care about uh, when n goes to infinity. We care about the uh, growth rate of function when n goes to infinity. That's why we use big O notation or asymptotic notation. I decided to give you a very brief um, uh, list of uh, functions from the slowest growing to the fastest growing. You probably don't need uh, anything else if you see, uh, if you understand and memorize all of that. You don't need like a, a longer list to compare uh, two given functions in terms of their growth rate and uh, big O notation. This would be good enough for, I would say, 99% of the cases, right? Maybe like there are a couple of uh, cases in your lifetime that cannot be handled by these uh, items that I have listed here. So this is a great list. You can add to it and make it longer. But as I said, most of the cases would be uh, uh, one of these items that you see in this slide. The first one is constant time. That's the slowest growing function. In other words, it doesn't even grow. It's a constant. So the, the derivative of a constant is zero. That means it doesn't even grow for all values of n, which means no matter how problem, how big of a problem you're dealing with, uh, the number of operations or instructions that the computer has to run is constant. So that's the slowest growing. And after that, you have uh, logarithmic functions like log n, um, base four. The base is always two, but if you see a different base, that doesn't change the growth rates. Um, it's going to be still logarithmic. And uh, even if it's log n squared, as you all know, the square or the power of n can go outside of the log n become the coefficient of the log. So log of n squared would be two times log n, so that still would be logarithmic. Um, the coefficients, the constant coefficients for functions does not affect their growth rate. So uh, with that, let's uh, move forward. Uh, we have polylogarithmic functions, which are basically uh, the product of multiple logs, like log, uh, log, log cube of n or log square of n. Uh, that basically means multiplying log twice or three times by itself. It would be greater than logarithmic, or it, it's going to grow faster than logarithmic functions, but it's not going to grow as fast as sublinear ones, which are basically functions in the form of n to the power of a constant less than one. For example, the square root of n, you all know a square root of n is equal to n to the power of 0 0.5. Or... Uh, Q root of n is equal to n to the power of one third, which is, uh, you know, um, you know 0 0.3333, and uh, n to the power of 0 0.8. Obviously, uh, this uh, n to the power of uh, 0 0.8 grows faster than a square root of n because the power is greater, and a square root of n grows faster than cube root of n because the power of n is greater than. Uh, cube root of n in the square root function. 
And then after that, we have linear functions like an plus b. Uh, these are growing uh, faster than uh, whatever you see before that. And then uh, anything in this column would be greater than uh, linear. For example, quasi-linear. That's a very commonly um, used function in uh, algorithm analysis. For example, we'll see about sorting algorithms. The uh, most efficient ones would be uh, would take n log n or order of n log n or big O of n log n when it wants to sort a list of items. It you're gonna see this a lot in different uh, parts of the class, and then also in the future if you take let's say in an algorithm analysis, algorithm a technique course, or later, if you take an algorithm analysis course, which is a master or PhD level course, you will see a lot of quasi-linear uh, complexities. So n log n would be faster than uh, linear, but it's much, much better or slower growing compared to quadratic functions. Quadratic functions look like this. Then you have cubic functions, which are basically, you know, in this general form, the greatest uh, or most uh, or the fastest growing term would be the uh, the nq part. Uh, the rest of it, the n square parts plus c and plus d are just um, smaller terms you can ignore. So you can say cubic functions is all, always big O of n cube. And then you have some other uh, polynomials of degree greater than three, like n to the power of four, n to the power of five. They happen uh, rarely in algorithm analysis. That means uh, it is unlikely that you write a program or a function or a, the algorithm or a code snippet that um, has a time complexity with this um, format, a polynomial with degree greater than three, but it's not... Um, it, it exists. It's not impossible to have a function or a program with this kind of complexity. Then after that, we're going to get to the point where uh, if your algorithm has these uh, last two complexities, your algorithm is not uh, a feasible solution because no matter how big of a computer you run your algorithm with, uh, it takes forever to give you the answer for large values of n. Unless you use some different type of computational model. If you use the uh, the regular Turing machine model, the one that we are using every day with one numeric architecture, uh, those cannot run exponential function uh, or exponential um, algorithms or uh, faster than exponential algorithms. Just remember that. Let me give you an example of exponential functions, two to the power of n, 10 to the power of n, et cetera. Normally remember, uh, there is a order between these exponential functions as well. For example, two to, two to the n grows slower than five to the n, five to the n grows slower than 10 to the n. And always, you know, the smaller the bases, the, the slower it grows. Uh, so not all exponential functions grow with the same pace. And then we have super fast growing functions that are faster than exponential, like n factorial or n to the power of n or raising to, to the power of itself n times. That means you just do n times two to the power of two to the power of two to the power of two. That's a very crazy function that grows um, astronomical. It's just uh, unbelievably fast growing. So if you know all of these, um, then you can basically uh, answer uh, the, the part of the, the homework that it asks you to uh, sort multiple functions based on their growth rate. If you uh, still have problem after you know uh, applying this list, to any problem, and you still want to compare two functions like f and g, and you don't know how to uh, compare them, then my suggestion is divide uh, f of n by g of n, and then find its limit, if you have taken some calculus course, you know what limit is, 
uh, when n grows to infinity and uh, see what the output is. If the output is zero, that means f grows uh, slower than g. If it's a constant greater than zero, that means f and g grow at the same pace. If f over uh, g gives you an infinity, that means um, f grows faster than g. So using a limit, you can basically handle that. That, but that only happens if you cannot solve a problem or cannot compare two functions based on this order. And uh, later I'm gonna talk about the programming parts. So I'm gonna go over like how to use a single linked list class that is given or use Java util linked list class to solve similar problems to the ones that you are given. So that's gonna happen after this. Okay, all right. Let's uh, do this. I'm going to, I have created a IntelliJ empty project. Uh, that's my favorite uh, in, uh, IDE for Java. So that's why I use IntelliJ. You can use anything else you want. Then I'm gonna create a new package and just right click on source, create a new package, I call it util, um, that's a utility uh, package. I'm gonna store node and link list in it. And also I'm gonna create another package. I'm gonna call that driver and I'm gonna store all the driver classes. Like The answer to uh, uh, the given questions in the homework and I'm gonna store um, those classes inside the driver class. So I have two of them, right? Uh, let me get rid of this main class. This is auto-generated by IntelliJ when you create a new project. So let's get rid of it. Perfect. And uh, this is uh, what I have for homework one. Uh, the theoretical part where it says, you know, order these uh, functions can be solved in a similar fashion uh, that I mentioned in the slides. The second part says, using a syntactic notation to find the complexity of the following functions. The rule of thumbs basically says, whenever you see a single for loop, that's order of n. When you see two for loops nested and a squared, three for loop nested and q, right? That's the rule of thumb that you can apply and it's gonna give you the right answer 90% or maybe 95% of the time. There is another 5% or uh, less than 5% uh, exceptional cases that uh, you have to pay more attention to the structure of the for loop and uh, decide uh, a little bit with more caution. So, the first one is obviously a for loop, so it's gonna be order of n. Uh, the second one, you have like two for loops, so it's gonna be n squared, but the rest of them, I'm gonna leave it to you to um, try to count, right? It's not gonna be the end of the world if you make a mistake and you're gonna get some partial credit, so it only has 20%. So probably if you make a mistake, instead of 20, you may get like, um, 18 or 16 or 14 or something like that. So uh, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just uh, try to count and uh, see if you can uh, answer that. Another way you can uh, do it is to basically calculate the value of sum in all of them at the end and uh, print out the value of sum for different values of n and get a sense out of, you know, what kind of function generates this sum. So basically the value of sum at the end would be a good indicator of how the uh, time complexity is, or what's the number of instructions. For example, if your n is 100 and sum ends up around the same number as 100, like 100 or 120 or 200, you would say this is linear. If n is 100 and sum gives you, let's say, 10,000, then uh, it would be, or 20,000 or 30,000, it would be uh, q, I'm sorry, quadratic, n, n squared. 
if n is 100, but sum becomes a million or 2 million or 5 million or 10 million, then you would say, oh, this is probably uh, cubic, right? Because, uh, you know, uh, 100 cube is 1, mi one, one, mil uh, one million. Right? And uh, yeah, so basically, not only you can, uh, look at these structures and try to guess what the complexity is. You can even run them and print the value of sum for different values of n. And this way you can guess how time complexity is gonna be uh, in an experimental fashion. So you can either do theoretical approach or you can experiment it. That's also a, an option. Or maybe you can first theoretically guess and then you can prove yourself uh, Experimentally, you can run these uh, for loops in a given uh, Java program and see what the output is, what's the value of sum um, for different values of n. All right, for the programming part, uh, I'm just, I clicked on these two. When I clicked on uh, each one, uh, the, the, I saw them this way. I'm using Google Chrome, you may use a different, um, browser and you see differently, but a lot of you had problems with um, how to save these as a class, node.java as a file node.java. You can either press Control S if you're on Windows and you know save it as a Java file, or you can just copy this. Go to IntelliJ. Right click on util, say new class, I call it node. And just select everything and paste the uh, the content that I copied from the browser. That's one way of doing it. Mm, and I, I wanna do the same thing for the single link list. All right, so as you all see, uh, we have these two classes. Now, uh, the questions are pretty interesting, I would say. Uh, the first one says, write a method that gives a single linked list um, object of numbers and a value max and removes every uh, number greater than max in the list. First, let's closely look at the single linked list. It has a head node. And uh, the node is basically a class that only stores two values, an object data and a node next. So it's a generic node class that stores a generic data with type object because object is a super type of all other types in Java. It's going to be the most generic node. And then uh, it has a single linked list. It is uh, part of a single linked list because it doesn't have a previous. It only has a next. If it has like previous and next, then it would be a double linked list node. But it's a single linked list node because I want to have a single linked list class. And uh, the constructor of single linked list initialize the head. And then there's a two string that basically uh, makes sure that uh, you uh, can represent the list in the form of a uh, sequence of items separated by comma and enclosed in brackets. For example, if it's empty, it's going to be an empty bracket. If it's only made of one element, the one element is inside the bracket. If there are more than one, then the items uh, should be separated by, by comma. So this is an example of how the two string works. This is basically a representation of a list made of 5, 10, 15, 7, 3, 27, 14, and 1. If this is the list and the maximum is uh, 13, uh, you should shorten the list by just removing 15 and 27 and 14 because they are greater than uh, 13 and this is gonna be the output. I'm not gonna solve this, but I'm gonna solve a similar question so you can see um, how you can solve uh, that problem. So under driver, I'm just gonna create a new class I'm going to say remove uh, prime numbers and 
I'm just going to create a method. I'm just going to call it remove uh, prime numbers, which gets a single linked list, and uh, it's going to remove all the prime numbers. If you understand this, then you can simply uh, solve the other problem as well. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how to use the singular link list uh, in a similar problem. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a method that specifies whether you have a prime or not. This is going to be a very uh, naive approach to find the prime primality of a number. Uh, there are much better primality tests. This is not, you know, uh, a number theory class. So I'm not showing you that. If n is uh, less than two, we're going to return false because no prime number is less than two. Then otherwise, uh, we're going to do this. We're going to say for every int um, factor equal to two, factor is less than, by the way, before that, I need to define an int n. That's going to be map. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Int um, the square root of n, that's going to be math.sqrt. This part is not related. I'm just going to make a method that checks whether the number is prime or not. And then uh, I'm going to do n, and then I'm going to just say math.ceiling this. And then I'm going to cast this to an int. And then I will simply say, Let's do this. I will say if n mod factor is zero, that means n is divisible by factor, return false. If you never return false in this for loop, then return true. That's how you test whether a number is prime or not. You keep dividing it by values less than its own square root. And if you cannot find a factor that is divisible, that then is divisible by it, then you return true. Otherwise, you say it's not prime, it's composite. This is an example of a sublinear uh, algorithm. Which takes order of a square root of n. The question of why you find the square root first and do this and you don't go beyond the square root is um, is an easy question to answer. The, the answer, the reason is, if a composite number has a factor that is greater than a square root of itself, it must have a factor that is less than or equal to its own square root. So if you search up to a square root, that's enough. All right, so with this irrelevant method, I'm just gonna solve a, a relevant question to the homework. I'm going to remove all the prime numbers. So start with uh, the head of the linked list. So I will say node uh, temp equal to list.head. And uh, I need to import node class. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say while temp is not equal to 
No. I will find um Find out whether I need to remove the temp, and then I will do temp equal temp that next, right? That's how you traverse a linked list, right? And basically, uh, you can use the is prime method and check whether temp dot data after you, ca you cast it to an int is prime or not. And I will say if it's prime. Um, let's remove the temp no right so that's basically what we're going to do right this while loop makes sure that you haven't reached to the end of the linked list and um, this is initialize the temp to uh, the list at head, and this one uh, every time moves forward to the next node. Uh, and this makes sure whether or not the data stored in temp is prime, because we want to remove the prime numbers. So this is how you're supposed to solve this problem. But remember, in order to remove a node, you need to know its previous node. And the reason is kind of obvious. Uh, let's say you have a linked list of three elements. I hope you can see my uh, drawings. And this is basically null. Let's say here I have uh, six, here I have seven, here I have eight. And let's say, you know, you want to remove all the prime numbers. So in this case, you're supposed to remove uh, seven, right? Seven has to be removed. If I move temp here and see the value seven and I try to remove it, I cannot remove it by uh, only having the reference to that node. I need to know it's previous and I need to say, give me the previous node and say previous that next is equal to temp that next. So I will jump over seven and that's how you get rid of seven. In order to remove uh, every node, you need to know the previous node. That's uh, how things uh, work in a single linked list. I mean, also in double linked list as well. For double linked list, you need to know both the previous and next. Anyway, so let's take care of that, right? Let's see how we can uh, keep track of both previous and next. Let me do this. I will say, uh, let's have a node called uh, previous. Initialize it to null because originally, you know, if the temp is head, then uh, there's nothing uh, else I need to refer to as a previous. So as long as uh, if temp is null originally and uh, the list is empty, then I don't need to do anything. But if it's not, then I will do this. I will say, check whether the temp data is prime. If it's prime, then it's time to remove it. I'm just gonna create curly braces here and I'm just gonna write down the code here. Let's uh, remove the temp now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the previous. If the previous is null, that means uh, the very first node is uh, prime. So what you need to do is you need to set the list.head equal to temp.next. That means the head of the whole linked list will change. And that's how you get rid of the head because you need to just get rid of the head. That's an exceptional case. And that's pretty much it. Otherwise, if the previous is not null, then that means uh, the node that you want to remove is not the head. So there's a previous node. So do this, previous.next must be head.next, right? I'm sorry, not head, temp.next. 
So that's exactly what I do with this orange color, as you see in this uh, drawing. And after that, I'm going to get out and I'm going to say temp equal temp dot next. That's always the case. Um, oh, here I should. Uh, Previous.next is equal to temp.next. Yeah, and then at the end, I need to say temp equals temp.next, yeah. All right, that's, that's how it works. Hopefully, I'm just gonna run it and see if it doesn't work, then we're gonna fix it. So that's basically how to get rid of one node. Also, I need to update the previous. Uh, after every iteration, I need to update the previous. Here at the end of this, I will simply say uh, temp equal temp.next, and I'm gonna say continue. But if it is not, or I can simply put an else here. And I say else, do temp equal temp.next. And uh, before that, say previous equal temp. Because both previous and next and temp should be updated. So updating previous. And then you update temp. Both previous and temp move forward. So if currently previous points to six and um, 10 points to seven, in the next iteration, assuming you don't remove six and seven, uh, previous goes forward to seven and temp goes forward to eight. So they both should move one step forward. Uh, I don't see any issue with this. Let's uh, run it and uh, hope for best. Let's create a main method, public aesthetic void main. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, let's have a single link list equal to a new single link list. And then I'm going to specify the head, which is going to be a new node. I'm just going to put uh, six first, and then I'm just going to say another note. I'm going to put seven here, and I'm going to say another note, and I'm going to put eight here. For those of you who are wondering, let's call this list. For those of you who are wondering what this uh, complex structure do, it basically creates a new single link list, and the head would be another note. The note stores six, but its next would be another node. As you see in this diagram, I'm just creating this link list, this red link list. Uh, the next value would be uh, node seven, and node seven has a next, which is node eight, and node eight doesn't have a next, that means the next of eight would be null. That's how you make that link a list. I'm gonna say, uh, before removing prime numbers, we got the list. And then I'm going to say remove prime numbers from this. And then I will print after removing prime numbers. Let's see how this works. All right, so it worked. Uh, but don't stop testing your code if it works for one easy scenario. Try other scenarios. For example, I'm just going to make this 6, 5 because now you need to get rid of the head as well. So even if, so in this case, it only needs to keep 8 in the loop. Everything else should be deleted. Let's run it.
how it worked. Why did it work? I was trying to show you some debugging uh, skills as well. Well, I wasn't lucky enough. I was too careful. I wanted to make a mistake. I didn't. Anyways, so maybe next time. Uh, if I make this also, let's say 13 and run it, it should get rid of everything. Does it do it? Yes, it does. Wow, okay. So this works uh, for all cases. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. So for this, you need to do a similar uh, thing. Next question says, Bob has N pen and uh, he uses pen number one for day one, pen, pen number two for day two, pen number three for day three, so on and so forth, all the way to pen number N for day N of school. Then for day N plus one, uh, he uses pen one again. And then basically we're gonna have a, a rotational um, pattern between all the pens. We call it, let's say, um, what do they call it? They call it uh, round robin. Maybe. Uh, and this process continues in a round robin fashion. Assume that Bob loses a pen every K days. He loses a pen on day K. Another one on day 2K, etc. Write a method using the given single link list uh, that gets the value of N and K and returns the label of last remaining. Uh, pen before Bob loses all of its pens. My suggestion is you create a a special link list that is called circular. So my my suggestion is you store all pens in a circular link list, and then. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry for the noise. If you hear some noise, uh, they're uh, doing always construction at the middle of summer. They assume no one is uh, in their offices. Uh, so if you hear some wild noises, that's because of that. All right, let's, uh, let's do that. I'm just gonna show you how to create a uh, circular link list. Circular link list basically means Remember the previous example? Uh, the previous example I showed you, there was uh, nothing after eight. So eight was pointing to null, right? The tail was pointing to null. If you wanna make this circular, then eight should point back to the head. And that's considered to be circular because you know it's just like a circle. Like uh, The last nodes next would be the first node. And we call this a circular single link list. Uh, I'm going to convert my uh, single link list to circular. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to uh, basically find out uh, the answer to this problem. The answer is. Uh, find out the label of last remaining pen before Bob loses all of its pens. As an example, if the Bob has five pens and uh, K is equal to one, so Bob loses a pen every day. So Bob loses pen number one first, then number two, then number three, then number four. Then five would be the answer because this is the last pen that Bob owns. If and it's five K is two, then Bob loses a pen every other day. So the first day he doesn't lose pen number one, but day two, he loses pen number two. Day three, does he doesn't lose pen number three. Day four, he loses pen number four. So this would be the list of all pens. Day five, he doesn't lose pen five. Day six, he loses pen one again. Day seven, uh, he doesn't lose pen number three, day eight, he loses pen number five. And day eight would be the decisive day because after day eight, Bob has only one pen and the pen label is three. So the last pen above is three. So that's basically uh, what we are dealing with. 
let me clear all the annotations. Okay, so the question is, make this possible. This is gonna be the, method that you need to implement. Let's do that. I'm just gonna import util star and uh, see how we can manage this. Uh, first, I would say, let's create a single link list. I call it all pens. And then here I will say new node, and I'm gonna only store one in it. Then I will say for every integer, i from two, i less than or equal to n, number of pens, i plus plus. I'm just gonna add one to it. So this is what I will do. I will say, let's have a node, call it temp, set it equal to all pens dot next dot head. And uh, here I will simply say uh, temp.next equals new node. Uh, I call this, I set the value i2 to, um, to that node. And I simply say temp equals temp.next. So what this does is first I created a head. Then I said uh, add other nodes or append them to the end by the help of this uh, temporary node. Every time this points to the, 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 the tail. So every time, if you wanna append it to the end, you say temp next is equal to new node i, and then you advance the value of temp so that always temp points to the, to the, to the tail. That's uh, how you make an array of all uh, pens. Uh, not an array, a linked list of all pens. If I say, let's print out all the pens, guess what's gonna happen? By the way, it has to return an integer. So let's at the end say return zero. It's gonna, this is just for the sake of um, making the code runnable. Zero does not the answer. So I'm just, and let's create a main method, public static void main. And here, all I need to do is I need to say, let's create, um, let's call this method. What was that? Bob's pen. Bob's last pen. Let's say you have 15 and K is five. I'm just gonna give it a random number. Let's run it. So as you see, it stores everything from one to 15 in it, right? But if you wanna make this a, uh, a circular one, then you have a hard time dealing with uh, this to a string method because this to a string method uh, should go through all of the items. And if you have a single uh, circular linked list, this to a string method has a hard time finding the, the tail. So we will have a problem. In order to fix that problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do some adjustments to this to make it circular. Before I do that, let me tell you, in order to solve this problem, you don't even need to touch this class. You can um, solve the problem without creating a uh, circular link list. The only thing you need to do is whenever you reach to the tail and reach to the end of the uh, link list and you see that uh, there's a null in the next uh, node, then you start over. So you don't need to make a circular link list, but I just wanted to 
show you how the circular single link list look like in Java. So I'm just gonna do it for the sake of uh, teaching you something new, right? So let's do that. I'm just gonna uh, copy the whole thing. Just create another class, call it circular single link list. Or I can, I don't need to do it there. I can simply change that and make it work for both circular and non-circular. So I don't need to uh, create a new class. I can just simply update this. First of all, I don't like this twist string method because it's calling itself recursively, that's too difficult. So let's uh, fix that. I'm just gonna call this number two. And then I'm just gonna make my own twist string methods. The previous one also, I did it myself, but it's gonna make a fresh one. This one, I don't wanna do it without, uh, with the Recursion. Instead, I'm going to use a string builder. For those of you who don't know what a string builder is, uh, it's a, a string, but it is mutable. That means you can manipulate it. And it's much better choice when you're doing the twist string method. Uh, I'll show you how it works. Yeah. As you all probably know, uh, the string class in Java, and even a string in Python, is not mutable. Mutable means what? means you cannot you uh, is uh, immutable. Immutable means you cannot change the content of a string after you build it, right? So a lot of times when you're creating it to a string method, you use a string builder, which is not immutable, which means you are able to change the characters in it, right? So that's a, a great uh, class to use. I'll show you how, to, how it works. First, you create an empty one, all the string builder, and then you start doing this. You say rv dot append. Uh, you append first an open bracket, and guess what? At the end, you're gonna append a close bracket, and then at the end, you wanna return rv dot to string. That's just the idea. Now between these two appends, uh, between these two open and close brackets, I'm gonna add all the uh, items. So this is what I will do. I will say, let's have a for loop. Let's create a node, call it temp, initialize it to the head. As long as temp is not null, uh, and then after every iteration, I'm gonna say temp equal temp.next. Here in this for loop, what I wanna do is I'm going to say rv.append uh, temp.data.toString. And I'm going to say if temp is not null, that means if temp is not, I'm sorry, temp.next. If temp.next is not null, that means if temp is not the tail, uh, do this rv dot append a comma and a space. That's gonna basically separate every node from the next one. This works only for uh non circular. If I want to keep it circular, then I need to update my continuation condition. So how do I know I have reached to the end of the link list, either temp is null. The temp is the head. Or temp is not the head. Right? The problem is, if you do this, it never, I'm sorry, end. Uh, if it if you do this, then it never uh, runs this for loop even once, right? Because originally temp is gonna be head, right? Uh, 
to solve that, I'm just gonna keep this simple. But here I will say, if temp is equal to head and it's not the first time, then you break. What is first? First is a flag. Uh, you have a Boolean uh, first, which is set to true. And then uh, after the very first iteration, you're just gonna set first to false, right? At the end of the first iteration, every iteration. You simply say first is equal to false. So this way you can distinguish the first from last uh, iteration. That's, that's a, a, a sneaky way of doing it. So this is going to take care of the circular parts. Works for a circular um, single link lists. Uh, the only thing I need to be worried about is, yeah, that should be fine, hopefully. Oh, here, here I should also be worried about this as well. So it's either temp that next is not null, and um, I should say temp that next is not equal to head. Because if temp that next is null, that means you have a uh, non-circular single link list and temp is your tail. If temp.next is head, that means you have a circular link list and temp is the tail because tail's next is head. So that's another um, manipulation that you need to do. And I don't see any problem with this. So let's first, I just get rid of got rid of this to a string method because I didn't like it for two reasons. One, it didn't use uh, a string builder. Two, it uses uh, recursion when you don't need recursion. Recursion don't use recursion if you can solve the problem with a while loop. Why? Because um, the computer's memory is designed in a way that when you call a method multiple times, it has to push the method's local variables into a stack many many times, and that's going to cause a lot of headache because Memory is a slow in general for a computer and memory operations would be very uh, time consuming. Always remember CPU is a lot faster than memory. Okay, so Bob's pen problem. Let's run this one more time. So it works for non-circular. Does it work for circular? As I mentioned, we would like to make this circular because we have a circular pattern in Bob's pen problem, right? Bob uses pen number one after pen number n. So what I need to do is at the end, at the very end, I'm gonna say uh, temp. Well, let's see. So. You make the last node here, let's say when i is equal to the number of pen, and say, oh, okay, yeah. So I should say temp.next is equal to all pens dot head. That line makes the all pens circular. Just one line makes a circular. Right? So let's see how it, yeah, it works. Even if it's circular, it creates the right uh, list for you. So your goal is to traverse this circular link list as much as it needs. And after every K iterations, you gotta get rid of one uh, pen. And then do this all the way until you only uh, you're only left with only one node in the in the uh, link list. I leave the rest to you to just think about it. Please, 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 don't ask anyone for help before you attempt solving it for hours. After you 
do your all your best and let's say uh, work on it for six seven hours and you still cannot solve it then you can uh, ask me your ta questions don't ask anyone questions try to do it yourself it's all common sense all you need to do is just have a piece of paper and a pen and uh, write some code test it if it doesn't work go to debug mode let's say do this i wanted to show you a debug and never made a mistake that's very rare and then click on this and then you just gradually uh, do f8 and go forward right and then you say oh this is where i have a problem because you know uh, my link list doesn't look good or something but this is basically uh, the for loop that I grow the uh, list of all pens from one to 15. As you see in this uh, part, uh, all pens is growing, right? So I'm just adding to it. But what I'm saying is uh, do the debug uh, operation. If your code doesn't work and keep working on it, if you spend enough time and solve this problem flawlessly, I would say you have made a huge progress in your uh, programming skill because uh, link list problems are always difficult to deal with and they need a lot of debugging. So please don't ask for help for any from anyone while you're working on it. Okay, but uh, please ask for help after you try yourself. Don't uh, uh, stay home and not talk to anybody. Just send me messages and the TA messages, or go to their office hours, come to my office hours, be active, okay? All right. Um, the next two questions is solve uh, 3A. One second. Oh, yeah, 3A is this one. Solve 3A using Java util link lists. Uh, so let me briefly tell you, I don't want to copy this. I'm just going to copy the, uh, the one that I had for removing prime numbers. That's a similar question. Uh, I'm going to show you that one with uh, link lists and that should be pretty much it. For the last question, I give you a very brief explanation as well. I expect to finish this meeting in about 15 minutes. I'm sorry that it took more than an hour. Uh, I got excited and I just went over a lot of topics. I don't know why, but that's fine. So let's, um, let's do this. Let's create or keep the same method. Let's keep uh, working on this class. I'm just going to copy this or only the first line. I don't need the, the whole thing. As an example to the next question, I'm just going to solve the same met the same problem, remove prime numbers, uh, but the input parameter is now going to be uh, linked lists of integer. What is linked list? It's in the Java YouTube library. So it's not my link list, it's the Java util library, which is gonna give you a double link list. Okay, so you wanna remove a, a prime number, it's gonna be 10 times easier than the other one. Why? Because now you don't need to even create a node temp or you don't need to see the interior state of the link list because even if you wanna see it, it's not uh, public, it's private. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an iterator. If you haven't seen list iterators before, that's totally fine. That's a class in Java Util that allows you to go through the li uh, link list uh, this way. You create a list iterator of integers, uh, call it IT or iterator, that's uh, initialized to list that uh, list iterator. Here you can either pass no parameter or if you pass a parameter, that would be the index you want to start your list iterator. I want to start from the beginning, so I don't need to change this. Let this be the uh, iterator starting 
at the beginning of list. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna traverse the list sequentially from left to right. And whenever I see a prime number, I'm gonna get rid of it, right? How does it work? I will simply say while it that has next, has next is a method that checks whether you have an X node. So in other words, it checks whether you haven't, whether you have reached to the end of the linked list or not. List iterators are a great way to traverse a linked list if you want to manipulate them. If you don't want to manipulate them, if you want to just read the whole list, then the best way to do it is enhanced for loop. You can say int item in the list. For example, let's print out the item, right? If you want to just traverse it for the sake of reading, just do an enhanced for loop and that's it. It's very similar to uh, any list. So that's a good way to read only. I should say traverse, traverse the list uh, for the sake of reading it. Now I'll show you a very bad way for the uh, for the sake of reading it, or even for for any purpose, if you say for int i from zero, i less than list that size, i plus plus, and then uh, either print it or try to just do whatever you want to do with that item by doing list that gets i. That's probably the worst thing you can do with a linked list. Uh, this is not an array list, so you don't have a random access to every index, so it's not indexed. So when you say, give me the ith element, that's going to take you order of i. And that means this for loop is going to take you order of n squared. Although it's a single for loop, but it takes you n squared. This is very, very, very slow and very bad, and it's not recommended. So never use get i in a linked list. So it's a, a very a slow way to traverse uh, the linked list. It works perfectly uh, for an array list, but for linked list, it's the worst thing you can do. Um, for a linked list, you can, instead you can do a, you can create a list iterator and you can simply say, let's do this while it that has next. Uh, you can iterate through that in any way you want. Uh, what I want right now is I'm going to say if is prime it that has next. And I'm going to not not has next next i'm going to check whether uh, the next element is prime if it's prime then i will say it that removes if not it keeps going right and that's pretty much it so let's try and see if this is gonna work. We're just gonna create a linked list of integers. I'm gonna call this list number two, and that's equal to a new linked list. And then I will say for int i from uh, zero, i less than 10, i plus plus, list two dot at last i, that's going to add uh, basically to the end of it. So it's going to append uh, i to the end of the list. Then I'm going to have a for loop. Uh, then I'm going to have like a, I'm going to have a code like this at the end. I'm going to Print it before and after removing the prime numbers and see how it works. So before removing prime numbers, it looks like this. 
after that, it looks like this. Now I found a mistake in my um, primality test. Here, if n is two, it should return true. It doesn't, so I should consider this as a And is as a uh, or I don't need to do that. I can simply say this should be flawed. Ah, that's okay. I'm glad I made a mistake. Okay, good. So uh, you should make it flow. Now, now it works. Now it removes two and three, which are prime. Five is prime. Seven is prime. It removes all the prime groups. So, but but look at the code. Just look at how simple the code is. It's absolutely easy to do because you just need to call the next and then remove, next, remove, next, remove. And has next to make sure you don't uh, exceed the boundaries of your linked list. Super simple, right? Compare this with the first implementation when you had to do it with your own uh, single link list. It is more complicated. However, when you do these complex stuff, you have ultimate freedom over your link list. As you just noticed, I created my circular link list for Bob's pen and I can solve the Bob's pen problem easier, right? But in a, a regular um, Java UT link list, I'm not able to do this stuff. I'm not able to make my link list stop, uh, like circular link list or anything like that, right? So always remember when you have um, a standard form, it gives you simplicity in some cases, but it is not flexible. It doesn't let you change it in any way you want. It doesn't let you make it, let's say, circular. And the last one says, make a balance uh, method called uh, is balanced um, that check the balance of uh, a given a string called input. The balance, I explained it here, but I'm just gonna give you another example. So let me create another driver class, call it uh, balance check. And all I need to do is let's import Java util stack. And here I'm just gonna use a stack of characters. I'm gonna call this stack equal new stack. I'll tell you why I need this stack. This stack is an auxiliary uh, tool to check the balance. All right. And at the end, I'm just gonna say return uh, true for now. Let me tell you what this method is supposed to do. Let's say you have the following. Right? So let's say the opening symbols are a list of items like um, A and B. Let's say the closing symbols are C and B. It can be any characters. In the example I mentioned in the assignment, I said, Opening symbols are, let's say, open parentheses, open brackets, open curly braces. Closing are closed parentheses, closed brackets, and uh, closed curly braces. But this is not, this is not a rule. This doesn't need to be the same. It can be as simple as, you know, A and B are the openings, C and D are the closing. No one says, what can opening be and what closing can be. Like you can choose your own opening characters and closing characters. So choose your own symbols. What you need to remember is these two arrays must be the same length. First thing you need to remember. And the second thing you need to remember about these two, they have no intersection. 
Intersection means there is no character that is in both of them, right? So they're kind of disjoint sets. And uh, no repetition, obviously. You cannot find the re repeated uh, character in any of them, right? So these are the assumptions of these two arrays, right? Same length, no intersection, no repetition, okay? And uh, the way they work is, you know, the first element in the first one, which is A, should match the first element in the second one, which is C. The second element in the first one, which is B, should match the second element in the second one, which is D. Right? So A is, A is the opening for C, B is an opening for D. Right? So the order matters, right? The first element matches the first element, second element matches the second element, last element matches the last element. So with that, you need to create this is balanced method that uh, check the balance of characters in the input. So if the input, for example, is A, B, that's a balanced one. I'm sorry, give me a second. If it's, if it's, I mentioned that opening is A and B, closing is C and D, right? If it's A, C, that's correct because A opens and C closes, right? B opens and D closes. So if I say B, D, that's okay too. But if I say, for example, A, B, C, D, that's not balanced. Why it's not balanced? Because A looks like an, let's say A is an open parenthesis, right? So let's say with A you open, and then with C you're going to close, right? B is another open, but it closes after A. So B opens after A, but it gets closed after uh, A is closed. So this is not correct, this is not balanced, but if you wanna make it balanced, you need to swap C and D. So if I wanna make uh, a similar example that is balanced, then I would say A, B, D, C. This is okay. If I make the opening symbols uh, simpler, like open and uh, open parentheses and open brackets, and then closing would be close, parentheses and close brackets, then I would say this is balanced, but if you do this, this is not balanced. So, how do you create a method like that? I'm not gonna show you the answer, but I'm gonna show you a similar problem. Let's talk about the similar problem. The similar problem is this. Let me copy this. I'm just gonna call this is balanced parenthesis. And get rid of the second and third parameter. Create a stack of characters, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, uh, let's have a for loop for every character C inside the input dot char array. Do not use the regular uh, when you want to traverse the characters of a string. Do not use the regular for int i from zero i less than uh, input dot length i plus plus and then say, uh, for example, print uh, input dot char at i. That's uh, not recommended. I'll tell you why. Because you can do much better than this. When you 
call the char add method every time to get one character, that's not an efficient way of traversing the characters. The, be the better way is to have an instance for loop and use the method to char away. So this way, you know, the string becomes an array of characters and then you can just use enhanced for loop to go over every character. That's much better. So use this instead of the traditional for loop that you may be used to. So in this for loop, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, check the value of character. If the C is equal to an open parenthesis, then I'm going to say stack that push. Just push the open parentheses or open symbols into the stack. Else, if C is equal to a close one, then do this. Say if a stack dot pop is equal to an open one, then uh, you gotta match it and and don't do anything, right? Before doing that, you gotta make sure it's not empty. So if the stack is empty, you cannot pop, right? Otherwise, you're gonna simply say return false because something went wrong, so it's not balanced. And if it's neither open nor close parenthesis, then you simply say, uh, continue, don't do anything. Don't do anything if C is neither opening nor closing parenthesis. At the end, your stack should be empty. So return a stack is empty. If the stack is not empty, that you have that means you have more opening symbols than closing symbols. So that's how you take care of this. Let me test this uh, very quickly, and then we're gonna end today's class. So today's meeting. So let's have a public static void name. Let's call um, the is balance parenthesis for this. Let's put some random symbols here. And uh, I'm going to print it out, right? Let's run it and see if it works. So it says, this is true, it's a balanced. This one is balanced. Uh, this one is not balanced because you don't have an opening one. This one, uh, you have too many closing ones, that's false, and this is true. So that's only for uh, an open and a closed parenthesis, but this one is a lot more complicated. It's not too much complicated, but you know you need to, uh, basically deal with uh, as many opening and closing symbols as you have. 